Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. I'm your host, Colossus Fate. It's episode 48. We're in the Cloisterwood, north of Driftwood, and this is Ferno. I'm going to make a note here. Ferno is essentially a phoenix. And we're going to leave him alone for right now. You want to bring Peeper to him. The Void Woken bird that we fixed. And there's also this house up here that's kind of lying in ruins. And if we look on our map, oh, there's no, it doesn't say anything right there. Target is out of sight. What are you talking about? How close do I got to be to him? This is some old abandoned house here. Ooh! Panties right next to the magical pike. That's interesting. Dead. Oh, very silent watchers leather shirt. That's kind of that's kind of funny. Very silent watchers. Oh, it's consider set silenced. Oh, that's why I don't use it. He set it silenced. So if he equips it, all the spells go away. Yeah, that's not. Add to wares. Not going to use that for anything. A wagon went over the hill over here, it looks like. I typically forget that I should periodically. That's where we did the scarecrow hat. Hit the alt key and check the things on the ground. Oh, a short bow and a stardust herb. So we're back at the paladins. Alright. I want to go a little north then. I want to go through this area up here and this area over here. There's a waypoint up here. This part on the map, right here, there's a waypoint up here, and this is what leads to Blood Moon Island. But we're not anywhere close to being able to do that right yet. But it's nice to come over here and get the waypoint discovered. So we can travel back to it later. And here is one of these shrines, one of these altars. So where is it? They're standing right at it. I'm gonna make a note. Altar number one. I could tie it. Before you lies a primitive altar to the seven, apparently constructed during a bygone era. Something about it appeals to you. A faint heat emanating from the stones, perhaps. Kneel before the altar and offer a prayer. The air stirs, as though someone had appeared and taken a seat upon the altar. A voice rises around you, its source unclear. Fractured whispers surround you. God woken. The word flutters against your ear. You are my champion. You cannot fail. A jolting sensation pierces your heart. 
As the shock fades, you realize you've absorbed a modicum of source, seemingly from the air around you. The whispers shuffle away, and the air shifts. Whatever was here a moment ago is gone now. Hmm. Seems like that might have been, um... Alex altar could be wrong about that there's three or four of those altars around here as far as I can tell what is over here anything oh there's something over here Fish bucket, backpack, bottle of beer, perfect. He's got a really funny journal. <laughs> this place is like all my nightmares made flesh. It eats into my dreams, worms into every thought I have. But I must persevere. I must find enough fish to sell to this man so I can get back on my feet again. I can do it. I'm sure I can do it. Mama always believed in me. Papa always said I was the best damn fisher in the village. I can do it. I must do it. He says, uh, going adrift with one of the fellows there told me about good money being paid by a man for void walking can fish. So anyways. Oh yeah, and one of the stashes is up here. Tree stone. Mashed taters, bottle of wine, we like that. What's this? Hey, hey! I found something. I believe this is one of the other stashes. Yeah, Bromley. One of the four heroes that had the covenant. Boots. Dumb amulet. Justinia's favor. Ooh. Those are, what are the boots? Intelligence. Red. Oh, they're way better than what you got, dude. Wait a minute. Why can't you equip them? Requires intelligence 13. Oh, because I'm looking at the wrong character. Red. Yes, way better than what you got. You got fire resistance boots, so. What about her? You really need these. Alright. Equip them. You need the upgrades. And then... Fame. Those are considerably better. Alright. That bit's taken care of. This is, uh... What is this over here? Well, this is the back side, that's right. So, oh, and that's a... Is that a shrieker? No, it's just a scary thing. It's meant to be, it's like a scarecrow. Yikes. Oh, this is not good. Where are these people? I think this is a level, like, 13, 14 area. We don't want to go there right now. This is the elf trial. I see you, but you are no elf. This place is not for you. Its trial is not for you to attempt. Hmm. So we can do this with Fane as a... Oh, it says right there, elven structure. We can do this with Fane with the mask on, but it's a level 14-ish encounter, and it's kind of brutal. And these guys, all right, Fane now is, is really going to have to. Fane, my friend, turn into an elf. Go no further. 
We are at ritual. Do not disturb us. Tell the elf to relax. Your kin, after all, you mean no harm. Oh. Respond to the guard with traditional elven greeting and say that you wish to bear witness to the ritual. Enter that. Keep respect. Birth to birth. Three battle-weary elven warriors make ritual over the body of a fallen comrade. They're chanting low and fierce. The pain of their losses manifest in every word. Blood to earth, to wood, to birth. The blood of Sarius to this earth. Whisper the refrain, blood to earth. The tallest, strongest elf, whom you take to be the leader, acknowledges your presence with the tiniest tilt of her head, then turns back to the task in hand. She places the tip of a long-bladed spear on poor dead Sarius's chest bone. Blood to earth. Her companions reach out and grasp the spear, ready to plunge it into Sarius's heart. Reach out to and grasp the spear. Blood to earth. Together you plunge the blade deep into Sarius's heart, then twist it three times as is the custom. Blood flows freely to the ground, and Sarius's heart lies neatly cut in four. Blood to blood. Each warrior plucks a piece of heart and places it in their mouth. Chewing solemnly, their leader looks to you to see what you will do. Follow their lead. Take a piece of the heart, put it in your mouth, and swallow. Oh, with great respect. Let's do that one. Sarya's memories flood you. A warrior proud and true, you fight the lone wolves at the sawmill for Sahela, your scion, and for the future of all the elves, or all that still remain. But the fight goes ill. You and Tova draw fire, that your friends may flee. You die in Tova's arms. Hmm. Give Tova a slow nod of respect. You share a memory now. With the barest blink, Tova accepts your good wishes, then turns back to the corpse. Sarius is a warrior, proud and true. Blood to blood, earth to earth, wood to wood, birth to birth. Sarius becomes his tree. May Sarius take root. The elves pick Sarius's bloody corpse from the ground. Tova looks to you, then indicates for you to help. Together you send Sarius to his final resting place. His corpse rolls to a stop at the bottom of the pit. The elven leader stands and stares at her fallen comrade. Then she wipes away a tear and turns away. All right, some physical armor there for a big boy. Or a big, huge staff. Hmm. Pants of battle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that thing there. Take a quick look at it. What's he got? Yeah, that's a little better, and it's got warfare on it. I really like that. All right, let's see here. I see the good in you. Ask the shaman for whom the elves are in ritual. We are in ritual for our comrade Sarius, dead at the hand of a lone wolf. Offer your condolences. Sarius is a warrior, good and true, but he is not yet lost. May his tree take root and grow. This is no well of souls. It is but a hastily dug pit. We stand ritual in this moment more in hope than faith. I fear the future if our trees do not take root. Our lands fell beneath the mists of death, and many trees are lost. Without our trees, we too, we elves, are lost. Tova, she's the one I wanted to talk to. The tall elf stares into the pit with dry, bloodshot eyes, Ooh, her face betraying books. no emotion. She has a ton of books. Anything? Oh, wow, look at that helmet. Finesse, scoundrel, pyrokinetic, and hydrosauce. Ooh. Mm. Is it better than anything that you were wearing? That was 31 and 22. Had wits. Yeah, it's better. It's got finesse and scoundrel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy that. And there's some pants here. Wits and perseverance. What do you have for pants? Equipped pants are pants of lenience, constitution or attribution, they're 38 and 27. And these have wits instead. Mm. 
I'm gonna leave what I got on. I don't think that extra point of wits is gonna be worth how much. All right. We lose too much. We lose our homes. We lose our safety. We lose each other. She looks into your eyes, her face set in a fierce frown. It is enough. No more. Elf responds, Nod, your people have suffered too much, far too much. Yes. It is as though Tyrus and Dilius himself forgets us. There is no fate for us but the one we make. You honor us during the ritual. You honor Sarius. You help remember him. You help bury him. But we need help still, or we perish here. Not only these people here, but all of us. I wonder if you honor us once more. What does she need? It is something of great importance to me and to our people. Our home forests are gone. The great trees are cut to pieces. The memories inside them nearly lost. They become nothingness unless we find our scion. Express your concern. A scion has been lost? Not lost. Taken. All our memories. Everything the ancestor trees knew. Our seed for the future. Stolen from us. She... She is... Her voice catches in her throat. She is my daughter. Her name is Sahela. And she is taken from us. That is why we come here. That is why we lose Sarius. To find her. If she is lost, if our scion is lost, all our people are lost. She is everything. Her eyes narrow, her fists clench, and her mouth tightens to a thin line. Do you know the lone wolves? Yes. Then you know the risk. We come here to get her back, to bring her home. She is everything to me. She is everything to us. Tell her it was you that saved Emro. You are the one. We come because of you. I thank you. But the lone wolves take her before we are there. You speak to her. You understand. You see what a gentle soul she is. You see how kind. She is not only a scion, but a precious child. She cannot be lost. Say so you'll try to find her. Ask for any information that might help. You honor. I fear it is impossible for one of my kind to enter their base. They know we are here. They expect us. But you have been away from the tribes. It is in your speech. It is in the way you walk. Perhaps you have a chance still. She is taken by their leader. A savage man named Roost Anlon. I do not know why. But I know she must return to me. If I lose her, I cannot lose her. We plan another assault. We cannot give up. It is better for us all to die than for Sahela to be lost. I only hope perhaps you find her before then. Good luck. I check her spells one more time. Supernova, spontaneous combustion, laser ray, ignition. Anything that I don't have, summon fire slug. I don't use that very often, but... Hmm. But I have used it in the past. All right, I'm going to call an end to that. All right, so Sahela. Now we know where she is. She's to the north on the map in this area where the lone wolves are. And we definitely don't want to go there <laughs> right now at this level. It's not enough. Um, in the meantime, you need to put on this fancy helmet. It's much better for you. And you get that one, and those are the old boots, and so here, Ifan, continue to add wares. And nobody's ever going to use this spear. Alright, as far as what to shoot with, hmm, I might need that bow and arrow. Might need that. Once all are well, once more I'm saving those gloves. I'm not saving the voodoo, voodoo hands. Red Prince, what are these voodoo hands? Oh, yeah, you, you use the telekinesis for a turn. Alright, and Alexander's cloak. Lance Blunt, blinding radius. What's she using? 66, hydrosophist. Okay. 
you can take out Xander's cloak and add it to your wares. And Fane, you also got this fancy new dagger. It does 20 to 21. Let's see if that improves your overall damage, which is 77 to 86 right now. Yep, barely. And this one, that means we can remove a rune. Alright. This goes up here. That goes there. That goes there. What are you doing? You pull both of these. We're trying to get out of here. Put them back together. Alright, we're going to come upon... Let's see, somewhere in here is an encounter for the Red Prince. Somewhere in the forest. Ooh, a live wood log. What the hell? It's worth 750. I've never seen that before. I have too much to carry. Great. Send those to red. Does that... Yeah, alright. Da -da -da. Where is the encounter at? For the Red Prince. I gotta find it. I wanna find it before I end this episode. Somewhere in here. That was the ambush spot right there. Alright, where am I? That whole business is up there. Oh, okay. I think we just want to go this way. There's the dog. Do we want to go that way or this way? Oh, I know what I got going on here. Okay. The shaggy dog keeps his distance. Wary eyes sizing you up as his hackle. You run away. Everyone here run away. All run. <laughs> all run. Something. I love the way the people do the dog voices. It kills me. Uh, say that you don't run away from anything. You run towards things. Like sticks. Bulls? Understand. I understand. I run away from bad man. Very bad man. Man wanted to make me spider food. <laughs> Very bad man. <laughs> I know. I can sniff good and bad. Like a bad. Oh. Ask him to sniff you. Do you smell good or bad? He pulls a few tentative steps closer and sniffs all around you. No. Smell not like dog. Like wolf. <laughs> but not bad like Riker. Good wolf. He bounds forwards and licks your face effusively. Oh. His breath stinks of graveyard clay and ancient bones. Immediately, you feel an allergic reaction developing on your cheek. Oh. Hot red blotches spreading in an angry rash. Oh, man. The dog scurries away to sniff about the area, leaving you with his approval and an itchy face. Oh, my goodness. Fortunately, first aid can cure that. <laughs> Jeez. Silly dog. Okay. Here is the black pits, and I don't, I don't want to go to the black pits. There's this other area over here, but there's this house up here. There's, there's a bunch of different things you want to do up in this area. Red, come here. You're the, you're the talky one. A man paces back and forth, puffing anxiously on a pipe. His face is creased with tiredness. The faint coppery hue of dry blood stains his hands. He sees you. If you're looking for healing or the like, then you'd best look elsewhere. My... my plate is full, for now. Note the lingering trace of blood on his hands and ask just what is preoccupying him. The man chomps on the bit of his pipe, generating a small cloud of nervous smoke. Finally, he plucks it from his mouth and clears his throat. I came by a new patient, a young woman, very troubled. I'll do what I can for her, but I'll need to concentrate. And that means he gestures with his pipe for you to leave. Say that you have knowledge of healing and offer to help. Oh, fine. You can help. Take this key and go to the cellar. I'll join you there. Just be careful. It's clear she's a powerful sorcerer, but also whatever she was subjected to was warped her in body and mind. I have her locked up for good reason. 
Okay, we're going to take care of this encounter, but we're going to do it on the next episode. So, folks, thanks for watching. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. And if you leave a question or comment, I will answer. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.